All right, Anthony on our podcast back for another episode, and we are talking about Alan Dershowitz, who reportedly lobbied Trump to pardon Ghislaine Maxwell before her trial. Plus, there will not be a separate Ghislaine Maxwell perjury trial. Got the details on that. We're remembering the great Bob Saget um, and perhaps the not-so-great Robert Durst, who passed away today at the age of 78. Two LAPD police officers have lost their jobs over Pokemon Go. And we're getting an Omicron vaccine. Plus, Red Lobster doesn't give COVID pay, which is forcing their employees to come in and work when they're sick. And do I got the vid? Do you got it? Talk about it. Golden Globes, JSAB's uh, job, and more, all on this episode of the Anthony on Air podcast, brought to you by our good pals over at Jumpstart Coffee Company. Save 15% when you order with the link in the description below. Use the promo code AOA15. Frankie C is here. How you doing, big man? Hanging in there. Do you got like the I'm vid? Doing better. I don't got the vid, but it sounds like, you, you know, the way you wrote this gigantic headline here. Yeah. Something's wrong with you. I might got the vid. We'll talk Let's about see. it. Um, so Alan Dershowitz might have a re by the way, scummiest, as far as vibes go, scummiest lawyer we've ever seen up there. Top five. I He's would up say. There. I mean, I can't name. Another, Did Hitler I, have a lawyer? I don't think they brought him to trial. No, and he didn't go to trial, but I'm saying he had a, do you think he had a lawyer? He must've had a lawyer at some point. Why would he need to go into court at it for any reason? Why I don't would know. He have to no, I don't think he had a lawyer. I mean, you buy a house, you get a lawyer. I mean, at some point in his life, you had to have a lawyer. Before he was like Hitler. Well, maybe, Hitler. yeah. Well, maybe when he was, I don't know, when he was just a, a, a art student. I don't know. I wonder. I wonder if it was Dershowitz. We'll have to look it up. I don't know if the timelines match, but we'll see. We'll, see. we'll get back to you. Um. Anyway, Dershowitz, who at one point did represent Jeffrey Epstein, uh, supposedly lobbied President Trump to pardon Ghislaine Maxwell. The 83-year-old lawyer, according to the Times of London, um, said that uh, he pushed for a pardon after Ghislaine Maxwell was arrested in July of 2020. Uh, obviously, Dershowitz knows Trump, um, New York, real estate, the whole nine yards. The, they, it's not a secret that the two of them know each other. Uh, but Ian Maxwell confirmed, that's Ghislaine's brother, Right. That uh, confirmed to the to the Times of London that he had discussed the possibility of clemency with Dershowitz um, at one point. Now he said there was a phone call between him and the prof and Professor Dershowitz, who's a professor, um, that uh, they talked. They discussed the issue of a pardon. Excuse me, I shouldn't say he. <clears throat> Ian confirmed that a family member and Dershowitz discussed the issue of a pardon. So I don't know if it was one of the other, the, his other brother or one of the sisters or whomever it was. I mean, so I'm not going to sit here and defend Dershowitz by any means, but this sounds like a, well, he told a guy that he told a guy that he brought up a thing. Well, Ian confirmed that a family member discussed to Dershowitz. So that part of the conversation happened. Okay. What we don't know for sure happened if Dershowitz actually ever broached the subject with Trump. Got it. Because Ian said that his family did not pay or explicitly ask Dershowitz to raise the matter with Trump. That's what well, they're saying. If, well, if you're talking about pardon, there's only one person you could bring it up to. Well, yeah, and it's weird because it's like if I said, to, like, you know, Janine, if I, if I brought up something to you to ask Janine... I probably am in a roundabout way asking you to ask Janine. In a direct way. Don't ask Janine what I just asked you. Right. Um, what? You're going to have to rewatch to figure it out. Yeah. Uh, Michael Wolf in his book, Landslide, which is about Trump's final days in office, brought up the fact that uh, the president discussed the possibility of pardoning Maxwell. That's the only other time we heard this. Um, and that supposedly he showed sudden interest in the madam during the pardoning period. So we don't know if Dershowitz asked Trump, but the only thing that makes this make sense, do you remember that press conference with Trump and they asked him about Maxwell and he said, I wish her well. 
That's right. Yeah. And yep. it was strange to everybody. Yes, it was. But most people were kind of like, whatever. Like, what else is he going to say? He's going to lose no matter what he says here. So, you know, he I could have just said, I have no comments on any of that. Yeah. Or I don't know anything about that. Like he said, you know, with David Duke and, and all the other terrible people, he's like, oh, I don't know anybody, anything about that guy. He could have just said, I don't know anything about that case or her or anything. Well, you don't miss a chance, do you? How do you remember all this stuff? Listen, he has so, a, someone's got to remember everything that Trump has said in the last 10 years. Yeah, it's called uh, YouTube. TDS. What? It's called YouTube and fucking Twitter and everything. You got this on a Rolodex somewhere? Yeah, right up <laughs> here, my friend. Right up here. So Alan Dershowitz denied the claim in an interview today. He blasted the report as saying it is simply not true. Um, but um, a lot of people seem to think it makes a lot of sense. I don't know. I say 50-50 flip a coin whether or not Dershowitz talked to Trump about it. Yeah, maybe. We're not, we, there's no real way to know unless one of them comes right out and says it. I mean, how the hell else are we going to know? And again, I feel like we've talked about this a little bit before. I don't think that Trump really genuinely entertains this, if not for the fact that it brings him some sort of attention and points to the amount of power that he has. What, that you don't think he entertains Dershowitz? If there's a Dershowitz request to pardon? Yeah. I, I mean, I don't see why he would unless, I mean, I don't he know. He's got nothing to gain from it. Yeah. Money, access, like he's the, like, you know what I'm saying? Like there's no carrot there for him. I don't think. I guess. That's just me. None that Call we know of anyway. That we know of at least. Uh, but that's the big story today, according to the Times. They're saying that Dershowitz brought it up to Trump. All right, we'll see. Maybe. Maybe he did. Maybe he didn't. I don't know. We will see. We shall see. Uh, yeah. The other thing is that uh, Ghislaine won't face a separate perjury trial. That kind of came out today. A lot of legalese here in, in lawyer speak that I won't exactly share with you. But um, <laughs> basically, it kind of comes down to the fact of she's going to get 70 some odd years if convicted and what's the point of bringing back victims to uh testify against so are they dropping the perjury charges they just said it's not going to be a separate thing i, I don't know exactly what the the exact outcome is going to be because she wasn't convicted of perjury and that wasn't part of the uh list of charges um if okay i should put this copy on there if she loses the post-trial motions meaning if this doesn't go to a retrial which it most likely is uh they're going to avoid a separate trial on the false statement counts uh advances that it advances victims significant interest in bringing closure to this matter and avoid the trauma of more testimony but if it goes to a retrial why wouldn't they just lump it all in under the you know add the charge to the new trial uh, yeah i don't know that's a great question i don't know that's i mean because it's another thing they'll have to prepare for no, i mean but you're doing a retrial anyway so it doesn't have to be a third trial just do it all at once yeah quite possibly all i know is that this letter came out today uh from the court so it's there's not going to be a separate thing and i didn't bother to look into it any further because i might well, i might got the fits and i, I was I hear you. unhappy <laughs> with well, reading <laughs> Well, maybe that it says it right there. There won't be a separate perjury trial. Maybe it will be lumped together. We shall see. Right. Uh, I tell you what, lump together your coffee orders in a subscribe and save, and boom, you're good to go from Jumpstart Coffee Company. Order with the link in the description below. When you do the subscription, you can get one, two, three, four bags of coffee sent to your house every month. As many as you want. As many as you want. Fresh bags every single month right to your door you never have to worry about ordering coffee ever again ever again ever jumpstart coffee is the preferred coffee of the podcast here all three of us absolutely love it link in the mm. description below great coffee great cause 50 percent of the proceeds go over to the navy seal foundation yeah. you're buying Jesus. coffee you're buying coffee anyway you might right. as well give half the money to the Navy SEAL Foundation. To the Navy SEAL Foundation. Exactly, Frank. Good point. Excellent point. I mean, you're going to get the coffee, so get the coffee that helps the Navy SEALs and is delicious at the same time. And don't buy shit coffee. That's right. Right. Because what are you going to spend on shit coffee? Like eight bucks? Ugh. Starbucks raised their prices, so. Did they? Mm -hmm. Shit coffee. 
some messed up. Yeah. And if you go into a Starbucks that's like part of another store, like a Target or a Stop and Shop, be prepared to pay even more higher prices, which is ridiculous. Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of it's annoying. Also, fifty percent of the profits from Starbucks goes to Al Qaeda. Did you know that? Because that's oh, shit. Yeah, so just be careful with where you're buying your coffee. Is all we're saying. It's messed up. Link in the description below. AOA fifteen. Save yourself fifteen percent off. Uh, let's remember the great. Oh Bob my Saget. god! This but it will wipe out. This was a big out of nowhere. Holy crap! And who broke crap. the news? Thank you. Thank you. Who broke it? You did. Yes. In the, in the group chat? In the group no, chat. to the world, obviously. Right. Yeah. But this, yeah, this sucks. Quite Does anything good happen in Florida? God. Yeah. He, I mean, a lot. He well, did. Disney. Yeah. I mean, oh, that's it. Yeah, I don't know. But, uh, Bob was found unresponsive in his uh, Orlando hotel room. At least credit him. He was staying at the uh, Ritz Carlton. I mean, that could have easily been him. the Red Roof Inn. You know what I'm saying? Right. Bob was doing good for himself. Yeah. You know, man, like I'm not going out at a Ritz Carlton. We all know that if it's a hotel chain. Yeah. You might get lucky with a Best Western. (laughs) That would be the highest I can get to. But we're probably around the Red Roof Motel (laughs) 6 ish kind of, uh, you know. You think you could swing six bucks a night? I don't know. It's pretty good. Holiday Inn is awfully skeevy, too. Nobody talks about how skeevy the Holiday Inn is. It started to get not nice. When's yeah, the last happened? time you stayed in a Holiday Inn? I I can't I don't even know I can't even tell. Oh, so cool. how do you know they're skeevy? Oh, they're skeevy. Maybe when the last time you stayed in them, maybe they're good now. Yeah, like the last time I stayed in one was basically it. I tapped out there. Yeah. Um, very sad about Bob Saget. I was hoping it wasn't drugs. That was it what. Was, ha- that's what our conversation it. delved into. We were I we were got to the point where we we're like, God, I hope he had a heart attack because if he had if it was drugs. Or a suicide, it would be just yeah. significantly sadder. Well, the only reason we go to that well is because it was out of nowhere, it was right. sudden. He wasn't sick that we knew of. Right. Um, so the only two things you, you, that pop into your mind, it's not the only two things that could happen, but the first couple of things, especially with a celebrity, you think. Especially with him. Suicide. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, but you know, we did. They did do a preliminary medical examiner report. Wasn't the complete autopsy, right? No, and then they said there's no foul play, no drug. Because that's yeah. the thing: when you die of a drug overdose, there's usually drugs near you. That's kind right. of what happened. I would imagine so. They said they found him though with his left arm on his chest and his right arm by his side. Which, if you know Bob Saget's comedy, I'm sure he viewed that as a missed opportunity. He would have put his hand on his dick had he yeah. known he was going to die in that moment. That would have been. That that leads me to believe that, I mean, he was on the bed and he was lay, lying down like that. If there's one maybe comforting thing, if it sounds like maybe he was, you know, have, you know a little, peace. Yeah, he was at peace a little bit. Like maybe it was his sleep. Maybe, and it just, you know, quick. Cause it doesn't sound like he, you know, fell to the ground. He laid, he lied down on the bed, and I think it just that was it. Like Seems nothing, nothing. Me. He looked good for sixty-five. He, he did, right? A million bucks, yeah. He did. Sound all signs. I mean, we don't know yet, but all signs are pointing to heart attack. But who, who knows? Yeah, we don't know yet. I forget who it was that was like criticized. I forget if it was Janine's brother or Janine's brother-in-law, but we, I, I don't know if it was me. I can't even remember now. It's long ago. And I got vid brain, but um, I got criticized for taking this so hard. Um, that's um my brother in law who has no heart at all. So okay, oh yeah, I was I, gonna say like he people... doesn't care at all. He said he doesn't care at all when celebrities die. Yeah, pe- what the hell is that? People of our age and a little a smidge older. If you're ten years older than us or ten years younger than us, Bob Saget played a huge role in your life. Hell yeah, yes like, he I'm, did. Somebody had it on Twitter. I forget who, but it was the. Oh, did they put it in this? Was that in the group chat too? That Bob Saget hosted YouTube before yep. YouTube was a thing. Yep. And we all tuned in on television at the same time to watch him. That's right. right. It's that true. was the best. Which is the truth. So he was. So I mean, he has an amazing career. He's a dirty, filthy comic. He got discovered on, I think it was Roddy Dangerfield's Young Comic Special. Oh God. That's right. But 
who was that? Was it the same episode as Andrew Dice Clay or was it uh, Tim Allen? I can't remember whoever it was, but the other person basically became the huge breakout. Really? Yeah. And he, he obviously did well for himself, but didn't have people forget that he was on the young comedian special. That's how right. that's kind of how it was. Then he went and did full house. And he parlayed full house into America's funniest home videos, which he did at the same time. Yep. While still doing stand up. Yeah, and then was... continued stand up after Full House and then had a whole nother, which I, by the way, I think was the best part of his career. He had a whole nother life with Entourage. He was fucking hilarious on Entourage. Oh, I forgot he was on there. Now, Frank's happy he died because he's anti Entourage. Yeah, I don't know why. The matter is. That's, a, that's a hell of a leap you just made. Oh, was that it? I didn't like Entourage, so I'm happy Bob Saget died. Holy I thought you crap. were boycotting it and hoping he died. I so. didn't like, I did not like Entourage, but I hate that Bob Saget died. Yeah. All right, I wasn't. I, this is why we have a show so we can clarify these things. Clear, clear these things up. I get it. But will this make you watch Entourage all the more, knowing that Bob Saget fucking kills it on that show? No. Okay. He does. <laughs> you play, know what's funny? He plays Bob Saget though. Yes. So I think that that's the first time I realized like that's how he was in real life. For a lot of people, I think. Yeah. Because I never really knew, you know, his stand up before that. And then I was like, ah, oh, this is why I like him. I think the first time was uh, he was on like probably Howard Stern or something. And I heard <laughs> him talking about like every just the dirtiest, filthiest things. And I was like, holy crap, this is Bob Sackett. And it was. Yeah. Uh, he, he, he's America's dad. And that's a hell of a title. Yeah, but yeah, well, so was Cosby for a little while there. That's true. You know what I'm saying? I um, think. And I never heard a bad Boop. word about Bob Saget. Other than his filthy mouth, you never heard any sort of. No, inter- everyone said he was so no. loving. The nicest, he, friendliest yeah. guy. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Uh, it's definitely a track. You know, 65 is not. Can't old. believe it. I really. When I first broke the news to you guys, I was like, oh, let me make sure this is true. So I went to my, my people and it was true. And I was like, oh, my God. How am I going to break the news to my friends? And then I just sent you the text. Man, you are dining on this breaking the news stuff, aren't you? She did get to it first. She does get to make it a meal out of it first. Very good. Um, he was also a killer in uh, what was the one with uh, Dave Chappelle? The pop oh, one. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my god, was... I forgot. <laughs> Holy crap! I, I basically have COVID. It. I have an excuse for this. What are your two excuses? Wait, you have COVID? I might have the vid. Why? Well, I have to stay tuned. That's that's why we put it all the way at the end. So oh, you could put my vid. vid in there too. How I, how I narrowly escaped three. Um, what's it called? What's it called? Three. Blind James? mice. Possible contractions. I oh. don't know. What three, am I, what? Circ- three of you avoided it three times. Three circumstances. Yes. Got it. Got it. What the hell is the I don't know. That movie? I don't know if I'm gonna make it to the end for that, but we'll see. I don't know if I'm gonna make it to the end. Okay. Half baked. Half baked. Good for you. Thank you. Yeah, is it would... at the end? Are we discussing it at the end, or, or can we do it next? On my vids. No. Yeah, we'll, go, we'll, we'll talk vid. No. Yeah. Um, but come on. I mean, America's funniest videos. Like that was. Epic. Yeah. And then uh, the follow up Dave Cloutier did with America's Funniest People. That was, I don't remember that. See, exactly. That was a very, <laughs> it was the same show. It was the same show. He co hosted it with a woman, I don't remember her name. And it, it ran like half as long. You know what I like, though? He stayed in touch with all those people. Oh, yeah. They were all like best friends. I mean, like people? Uncle yeah. Jesse, him and Uncle Jesse were still tight. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And Dave Coulier. Right. Like, like, still, like, after how many? There was it thirty-five years. <gasps> oh my god. Yeah. Don't say that. But yeah, it's true though. Like, even they uh, still, the, even you know, uh, the kids. Yeah, well, the kids still. They they all kept in touch. Mm-hmm. And every like every comic like yesterday. When was it yesterday? Yeah. Or Saturday. Yesterday. Yesterday. It was yesterday. Every comic on Twitter that I follow had like nothing but kind work. Like every, yeah. from yep. like huge headliners to just fucking people starting out in the business, they were all like had the nicest shit to say about him. 
Yep. Which is so True. sad. Fucking like 65, man. That sucks. Damn. Does that hurt that that's practically 25 years away from you? For you? Oh. Like, it hurts. That, that hurts. No, but it's not as bad only because everybody agrees that it's still it's too young. Like, you could people yes. go at our age. Yeah. But, you know, we're all in agreement that 65 is still pretty young. Yeah. It's just, it's weird how time goes. I saw a picture of myself just before I started dating my wife. You didn't turn to stone? No, but I was looking at it going, oh my God, that was minus a wife, a house, a few cars, two <laughs> children, two human beings. It was like a, a, like a totally different. You're a different person. World. Yeah. It's so strange to look back at that and see how full of life I was. <clears throat> um, <laughs> oh, I get it. I definitely get it. Right? Isn't that? It's fucked up to see, you know? I don't know. I hope your kids don't watch this I, one day. I know. It's going to be there for them. Eventually, they're going to see it. I don't think they'll watch it. My kids are going to be Googling, how do I delete old videos off of Facebook and YouTube, basically, at some point in their lives. Any hoozles, uh, two LAPD officers have lost their job because they were playing Pokemon Go. I love it. They took the <laughs> gotta catch them all phrase a little too seriously. Uh, two cops fired from the LAPD. This is according to Steven Totillo <laughs> on Twitter. After they failed to respond to the report of a robbery and drove off to hunt for a Snorlax in Pokemon Go. They appealed, said it wasn't okay for the squad car recording of them to be used against them. They lost. <laughs> How dare you use what I did against me? Yeah, that's fucked up. Uh, they denied playing uh, the video game and claimed they were merely having a conversation about Pokemon Go. But, but yet they ran away? Yeah, um, they took the car to a location that... For approximately wasn't where they needed to go. Yeah, for approximately twenty minutes on the in car recording, it captioned uh, petitioner. Uh, well, the the officers discussing Pokemon Go as they drove to different locations where the virtual creatures apparently appeared on their mobile phones. <laughs> on their way to the Snorlax oh God. location, Officer Mitchell alerted Officer Lozano that a Togetic just popped up, noting that it was on Crenshaw just south of Fiftieth. <laughs> yeah, where the, you know, that robbery took place. So wait, so they were so they actually got a call over there the uh, the what's it called radio the, the radio that a crime was taking place and they ignored it. I, they refa they failed to respond. I guess failed they to thought, respond. Oh, somebody else. <laughs> we're busy. We're busy right now. Let me tell you, people are like because you. you you have to remember, this is right before the pandemic. People went crazy over this Pokemon Go game. They really did. For a second time. Yeah. Right. Because when but... Pokemon Go came out, people went nuts. And then when you're right, when the pandemic came back, people were back all over it again. Oh, I'm not de I'm not denying that it's a craze and everybody is hooked on it and stuff. But when you're a police officer and you get called to a crime. I don't think Pokemon Go, the Snorlax or whatever the hell it's called. Snorlax. Snorlax. <laughs> I don't think that takes precedent. It depends, I guess. Your Honor, you know how rare a Snorlax is? <laughs> All right. You're, you're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> That's true. Imagine the judge is like, I, I know. I'm trying to find one right the fuck now. I can't. What oh. what, what corner did you say it was on? <laughs> when I get out of here. I Where exactly were you? Yeah. That is ridiculous. Yeah. Well, we get it. I'm surprised. I here's the let me tell you what let me say this. If I was a cop and I was on highway patrol, mm. I would never give that a ticket ever. Like, Why? I would never. be on the side of the road sleeping all the time. I would just fucking sleep for eight hours straight. I feel like they would know. How are they gonna know? They knew this these guys were playing poker. How are they gonna know? How are they gonna know? <laughs> They're gonna know. <laughs> They're not gonna know. Um, yeah, I don't, I mean, yeah, I guess now that the, that you're being recorded in your car, that's, you know, not to mention the fact that at the end of the month, when you, when you bring in zero tickets, zero tickets, they're going to be like, Hey, uh, what the fuck? I get busted off of that immediately. You'd just, be gone in two days. Sit in your car. Sit. You know how, you know how calming the sound of traffic is? It's very soothing. It is. I'd constantly be worried though. Sitting I on the side of the road. I can fall asleep. 
sitting on the side of the road like that, unless I was tucked away behind like a bridge thing, I'd be constantly worried that a car is going to smack right into me. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't park there. Like, you ever see the cops that are, like, way up in the side, like, in the trees? Like, the, yeah. are, aren't those guys sleeping? I mean, Yeah, I'm not, they are. They're sleeping, right? I mean, yeah. I think it's yeah. fine. Yeah, come on. Because I, that's better off, because when they're in the middle, then people are slowing down, jamming on the brakes. They could get into an accident. I like the cops that are like, fuck it. I'm, I know I'm napping. I ain't going to bother anybody. I'm going to I'll just sit over here in the back. and That's it. It'll be fine. I think they could probably get away with putting a cardboard cutout of a police car. And just people just slow down. That would be amazing. <laughs> they see it and they go, oh, shit, I got to slow down. They had that. I've told the story before. They had that in the Hamptons, like where the highway turns into like the road oh, yeah. where Ugh. the stores are. They they put a huge cardboard cutout of a police car and a, <laughs> a police officer with a radar gun on by the hood. the shit out of you. As you people know. hated it. Yeah. They, Nobody goes more than uh, what forty there anyway. So they, oh, that's like the worst spot ever, right? It was a well because it was it was where everybody goes from seventy five down to thirty. Yeah, and it was like right in that spot. And then like everybody was like, we don't like it because we feel like they're gonna put a a cop car, park a cop car in front of it, and it become a speed trap. And like three weeks after they put the thing there, there was a cop car parked in front of it. <laughs> hey, that's a good idea. <laughs> Oops! They took it down though. They friggin' they took it down because people were so pissed off. Well, speed traps, you know, it's like oh, I, I hate it because you're gonna catch me speeding. It's yeah. like yeah, you shouldn't be speeding. Um, I agree, but there's certain places where it's just like in in Queens right now. You in certain places you can't go more than 25 miles an hour. Which how are you gonna do that? On Cross Bay Boulevard. I wouldn't go on 25. Cross Bay Boulevard. That's the first thing. Right. <laughs> Cross Bay Boulevard sucks to drive. You can't. On. You can't go more than twenty five. You get a ticket by a camera. Like the, it's. Oh, I don't even know. I, okay. I Cross Bay Boulevard is the only place. Okay, so this is the main thoroughfare, basically where we all grew up, Ugh. and it, it's in Queens, and it's a three lane road, and where we are, so it was three lanes. And then there was a place to park right up on the curb, which would turn into near like the busy pizzerias, not double parked, triple, triple. at least triple, triple parked. parked. So you'd have the parked car next to the curb, the car that double parked there, and then a car that triple parked. Because there were a, there was a line of double parked cars. Right. Because not only could you get a spot, you couldn't even get a double park spot. <laughs> right. <laughs> How do we function as a society? I don't know. Now in Long Island, I'm like, if I don't have the second spot from the door, I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> but we're fucking. Why does everything apart. bad happen to me? <laughs> God. Spoiled. That's exactly what happened. But it, but yeah, certain parts you can't go more than 25. So you can't go that fast anyway, even if you wanted to in most of those areas. Because that not only are the double parked cars there, now they have uh, the lanes, they have like these turning lanes that are like, they have these like barricades up and stuff like that. Some lanes you can't even make the turn anymore. They blocked off half the turning lanes on that road. Is that right? And it's it's yeah. all the whole the whole road is just a, a big. It's nothing like we remembered it. You know what's insane is New York City, Manhattan itself. Mm. I, I oh, don't it's... even know where they're putting bike lanes anymore. So now the bike lane, there's like a used to be the bike lane was like like up against mm. the parking lane, then. In some places now, the bike lane has moved to the other side of the parked cars. Yeah, so I don't. It's curb, bike lane, then parked cars. And in some spots, it's two bus lanes, then the bike lane, then the regular traffic. You know what? It's really stupid. And I discovered this a couple of weeks ago. There are some roads in Manhattan that are only bus lanes. Really? I turned down a road and I'm literally the whole street underneath me was red. I was like, uh, where the hell am I supposed to drive? Yeah. Every single lane was a bus lane. And I was like, I, I got to I gotta turn around. I got to go somewhere. I pulled over. I tried to get out of that, get off that street. It was insane. It was weird because when I was in the city for the holidays, I was, it's, and I always do this, it's Fifth or Lex, or I forget which avenue. You turn, you turn down the wrong way, then you have to go back and turn around again. No, no, but there's like those two oh. bus lanes, and I never know. Do I turn from this lane and go across the two bus lanes, or do I go into the two bus lanes right. and make oh. the turn? I think you go into the bus lanes. I go into the bus lanes. Yeah, to turn, you have to. Yeah. You can't. 
And sometimes know. three blocks early because I'm like, why am I going to sit in this traffic when I can go into the bus lanes? For three I don't blocks? know. I don't know how bike people do it in this in the city. I'd be scared to death every time I get into the street with one of those things. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. How, I know. It's insane how people ride a bike in the city. No, no always good. has been. Always, yeah, no, always has been. there's no way. No you know shot. Else, you know what else, too, I feel like is a little bit of the wild, wild west. I love when we have stuff before it gets like cracked down by the government. Ways. You know how Waze tells you where the speed traps are? Yes. Now my Apple Maps is telling me where the speed traps are. <gasps> oh, really? How long are they going to let this go on before they crack down on these companies that they're not allowed to do this? Why aren't they mm. allowed to do it? I don't know. I love it. I'm just saying. I just I, like like whenever we're getting one up over the government, I feel like there's only a matter of time hey, until on. they pass some legislation about how these companies can't do that shit anymore i think they would they shouldn't be able to stop companies from doing that because the goal should be to reduce the speed not to bring in tickets although we know that is the goal right but so if these speed trap alerts are reducing our speed then they should be fine that, hmm. should, that should it accomplishes the goal Mm, look at that point. I like to pass then. legislation to rename speed trap Snorlax. I think it'll be a oh, lot gosh. more appealing for everybody. Bye. You find them all. Snorlax is fun to say. Is. I think that's why they called it that. Yeah. Um, the Pfizer CEO predicts that there's going to be an Omicron vaccine now ready for early March. Okay. <laughs> Unbelievable! I'm shaking my head at this stuff now. At this point, I don't. I don't know what to. I don't know what to do anymore. Why? I don't know. I don't know what to do. I, people don't know what to do. This is this whole thing, you know. Now, so we got the vaccine, two shots. Everybody just got boosted. Omicron's running crazy. They don't even know if this really works against Omicron. And now they're like, oh, we'll get an Omicron variant. <laughs> By the way, his, his comments are hysterical because he's like. Omicron and other variants, and they were like, "Which ones?" And like, you know, future ones. So, <laughs> just like what? Just let me pick something out of yeah. the air. Here's the thing with that. <clears throat> so it's obviously this is what everybody's getting right now. Okay, um, we're already seeing a downward trend of it, which means that March is too late. It's it's too late. Because nobody will be have nobody's gonna have that then, just like nobody had Delta like now, you know what I mean? I, yeah. So true, but I don't know okay. if that's entirely true, but you're, the, as far as the the mate the big one, yes. Delta still mean? going around. They the still had. Uh, they're saying Delta still around. Right, but the majority is. Yeah, right, because it's it not spreads the easier. One. It's not the dominant one. Yeah. So I mean. So then what's the point of getting the booster? So now if you just got the booster, say you just got it last week, now you're going to have to get another shot again in March? I'm with you. It's nah. absurd. I mean, I'm not saying not to do it. I'm just, I, it's crazy. I mean, because oh. the thing is, is what do you do? You <clears throat> don't come up with a solution to stop this? Exactly. I get that. They're coming up with ways to fight it. But what at the want? same time, I think my, my point is, I'm not blaming anybody. It's nobody's fault. I'm not saying the government is bullshit. I'm just saying... It's kind of crazy where we're at with this now, where it's kind of, it's like there's no fucking right or wrong. I feel like, would you rather them say, yeah, Omicron's here and we're not going to do anything about it? No, you're right. I wouldn't. But at the same time, it's like they're, they're pushing so hard for these boosters. It's not, And they don't even really know if it's, you know, yeah. if it's going to be effective or whatever. Right. Because so look I how many people the, I know who've gotten the booster and then still got this too so. see that's not the point see uh, that's what I know. everybody says it's, it stops it's, you from getting you could sick. still get it i know no oh, matter I know. what you could still get it the point is uh you will not get as sick and you won't go to the hospital and you probably will not die from it i agree but that's the what the vaccine does the thing that's hurting that uh that uh marketing message is that the omicron isn't as potent and that the people that are that too not vaccinated aren't getting as sick exactly and i've seen that too so obviously it hurts the message it does because like they stressed this isn't um a serious strain it's just you know cold like symptoms pretty much like every other strain but they're saying this one is less um 
potent. Is that, did I just use that word it's for the second time? So if that's the case, then why would you want a vaccine for it? The whole thing is a mess. So I saw this thing on at Red Lobster. Red Lobster is not giving, not giving uh, COVID pay. That's messed up too. People that are sick. So what's, ha and, and who works at Red Lobster? Fucking Fortune 500 people? No, like people that are living paycheck to paycheck. So what's right. happening is, is like they're getting sick and they're, they're not getting paid if they have to go out. So what are they doing? They're like, well, fuck it. I'll just go in to the restaurant with COVID. Well, I think a lot of companies who don't give their people pay like that, people are thinking that way. They're thinking the same exact yep. way. And, and I don't really blame them because that's not that's not fair at all. I, isn't it a federal law that you have to pay, what is it, up to 80 hours of COVID pay if, if someone's sick? Dude, it, I feel like it has, I feel like we fell off so hard with how to, our response to this, it's not even funny. Like in the beginning, it was nobody's ever going to have to pay for a test. Like right. we're going to always have tests are plentiful. Now tests are like forget it yep yep and you can't even get them it, when nope. you can get them so let me tell you my let me give you my experience this is what this is what happened to me all right then i'll give you my experience okay do i got the vid do i got the vid i still very like i like that title go ahead i still don't know and i feel like nobody really walks you through this so my wife friday here in new york we had a snow day my wife works part time in the schools in, in our like school district here. Okay, so and she wears a mask. She's required to to be in the school. So she wears a mask at all times in the school. Ooh. Okay. So she comes home Thursday, fine. Friday, the entire day with the kids, fine, nothing. Saturday, fine. Saturday night, like at night, right before she goes to bed, she's like, ah, I'm feeling kind of achy. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's the day or, you know, they were out. She was out playing with the kids the day before and the snow and this and that and, you know, whatever. So so Saturday night, not feeling all that great. Sunday morning gets up and I was like, oh, I don't know. She's like, I really, my, I am feeling achy, my head and blah, blah, blah. So as the day goes on, she progressively gets worse. Now, this is after we had, she had spent since thursday night with the kids with me too i was gone for part of the day on friday but i was with her all day saturday and we slept together saturday night sunday morning you know so i'm in the room with her yeah no not that i wish but not that but um so now i'm like all right well if she has this the odds that i don't have this mm -mm. are crazy go ahead then I feel like the fact that if she, my, my kids rotate around her like the moon around the earth, like they do not leave this woman alone and they're hanging on her and they're sneezing in her face and they're coughing well, on her and all this shit. So I don't know if it came from them or it came from her. But again, I kind of feel like if she has it, they have it too. So what do we do? All right. So, so, so now it's like Sunday night. It's like five o'clock. She's been in bed like half the day. She she's not getting any better. She feels worse. So I go, let's, I don't know, let's go get a test. And now we kind of feel like let's test the whole fucking family. What are we gonna do? <clears throat> so we get we jump in the car. She <clears throat> called, I forget who she called, but they were like, Oh, they're doing drive-through tests behind one of the hospitals near us. They close at six. Okay, so we go. We show up at 5:15. Everything is closed. So we're like, okay, well, that's out, right? Um, you know, and then it's like, you know, does she go to work? Do we hold the kids back from school? I have meetings and things today. Uh, you know, I had some client meetings and stuff planned for today. Okay, fine. So we go, I go, I'm, I'm searching around now, and I see that one of the other, like, walk-in clinic-y things has, uh, does test until 10 o'clock at night. Okay, drive there. Now, a little caveat in this story, which is insignificant, really, to the grand scheme of things, but kind of still important. I was hoping this story would be longer. We're in the midst of switching insurance companies. Oh, God. When I went to the new insurance company, I got a thing from them that was like, oh, 
somebody is already insured under your name. Something is not right here. We can't Ugh. give you a thing yet. What? So I go, okay, no, like they wanted my social security number. Okay, no big deal. This was the other day though. So I still don't have anything. Anything. So I go into this place and I go, you know, blah, blah, blah. I need a test. Okay, fine. Um, what's your insurance? So I tell the woman the story. She's like, oh, you can't not have insurance. And I'm like, that's Please not don't true. Act like I'm a scumbag. I have insurance. I am just literally in the midst of, of the thing. The old one stopped at the end of the year. I hadn't fixed a new one before, you know, Christmas, you know, and it just kind of fell by the wayside, you know, so whatever. It's I was like, I can get it back retroactively. I know that because that's what they said to me at the time. They go, whatever, if you have any doctor issues, whatever, go and then they'll retro will retroactively cover you. And when I said that, one of the other nurses popped up. And she goes, don't don't you're going to be fighting that for months. So I go, how much is the test? Hundred and eighty dollars a person. Are you kidding me? It would have cost me seven hundred and twenty dollars to test my here. entire family. For which test? For a PCR, PCR test. That doesn't seem it was, it's twenty dollars over here. Mm. I don't know what the hell depends on where you go. It that was makes, I, I won't no I will not say the name of the place, but it was you drive around, you'll find one of them. There's seven uh, of them in the, the state one, of New York alone. Is it the one I went to? I don't know. That's near you. We'll get off the air. Go ahead. I forget. The, I forget the date, but um, Biden said that now the home one is going to be. It has to be there. He's making it illegal. Insurance has to cover a home test. Okay. Uh, okay. Fine. It's like it's like why? in two weeks. But why is it insurance? Because you, I feel like you have a lot of people working, especially in the service industry, who don't typically work for companies that offer insurance, that don't have insurance, and they're the ones who need it the most. The people that are first responders that we fucking clap for all the time, our frontline workers, the restaurant workers, and the fucking nurses, and the grocery store people, and the delivery people. These are the people that need it the most, and if they don't have fucking insurance... To test their family of four, it's going to cost them seven hundred and twenty dollars. That's uh, insane. I don't. I don't agree with. Yeah. Charging Supposedly, for tests. I don't know why that is. Even if you don't have insurance, you're not supposed to get charged. But go ahead. That's so, a whole nother conversation. When I went over the summer, they were like, "Do you have insurance?" And I was like, "Yeah." And they're like, "Give us your insurance card." And I said to them, "In this, I'm like, I thought this was supposed to be free." They're like, "It is, but it has to be covered by your." healthcare provider and i was like that doesn't make it didn't make any sense to me then and it sure as fuck didn't make any sense to me last night as i was like what you know i think what, the confusion was the vaccines are free no the tests were supposed to be free too and covered. the tests were supposed to be free too because how else can you should be again if you're me like i could have easily just said fuck it like if i had exactly. a nine to five job i could have been like fuck it and just go into work so well, the my whole life feels like shit. Oh, and by the way, right. so remember we said they sent home tests. Yes. Sent home tests with the. So my wife took it Sunday in the afternoon before she felt really, really shitty, and it came back negative. But it's like, can you even trust that? Because no. all you read about is the fact that this, those tests can pick up Omicron. They cannot detect Omicron, is what everybody is saying. Yeah, uh, the tests are definitely. That definitely needs fixing. I don't know why we're being charged for tests like that. Um, so so what did you say to her? Like, no, thanks. I'm not going to take this or. So I was like, you know, because I, I said to the woman, I, I go, OK, what do you do? She's like, I honestly, I don't know what to tell you. She's like, and you're not the first person that walked in here like this. Well, this is the thing. They want you to contact Trace and test and do this. It's like. I'm not paying seven hundred and twenty dollars just to contact Trace. Sorry, I'm not doing that. that that's why I'm. You pay for it. That's why I'm angry because there was all this. We're gonna get through get this together. Don't get me started, girl. Better New York and all this bullshit. And it's like, okay, now I have a like I have insurance, so it's not that big of a deal. I could have went through it and fought it and did the whole process and and whatever. And I, you know, not to be a dickhead, but I could have paid the 720. If this was something that was dire, I could have paid the money. 
right? But people, a lot of people can't. And that's incredibly irresponsible yep. to have that be happening while, like, look at Frank, boosted up like a mad motherfucker. And he, and then you're going to let some other Bends over fucking... for shots up his you yeehaw. Well, that's a little a bit much but then you're gonna have some other fucking guy a uh, delivery guy be like i don't have insurance fuck it i'll just go back to work and pick up my you know yep and be interacting with people all the time like what that Sorry. doesn't make Should any be free. sense that I doesn't agree. make any sense i'm gonna have to look that up because supposedly all the tests are supposed to be free and it's so anyway so again so with that insurance too go ahead this morning we wake up and we'll go back to the other place I was like, oh, wait, it. you said no. You said no. You're not going to take- lay yeah. out $720 nope. for something that I can get for free the next day. And we went back to the testing. site, And I said to the testing site guy, I'm like, is this I'm like, I don't even have my insurance card with me. He goes, don't worry about it. Just take a picture of your license. I said, All right, what is fine. what would they charge you then? There was no charge. So what the hell? Was I don't it? know if I'm going to get a fucking bill that I'm going to have to fight over, you know, eventually. But that he, because I, I said to him, I said, I have insurance. I don't have a card right now. I don't have a card with me. And he was like, just take a picture of your license. And it was for my two kids too. That, you know, I, well, they obviously are insured through me, but you know, it's like they have insurance cards, you know, either. So I had to like do that like twice over when I was doing it for them too. But you just went through and they just drove you through and it was like done. It was like, you, you just do it and that's it. But it was fucked up. I really feel like, you know, they, they talk all this game and all this shit. And then, like, when you really kind of, like, need something, it's like, well. Mm, sorry, insurance. You know, Got to go through insurance. It's like, it shouldn't be that way at all. It should be the easiest possible thing to get. Yeah, you're, you're, you're turning people away from getting tested. You are turning. A thousand percent. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. No, but uh, uh, I'm, I have an unpopular opinion, but I'm going to keep it to myself. On this, go ahead. Yep. Nope. Keep no, go ahead. No, tell me your What's unpopular the unpopular opinion? opinion? No, because it's just gonna. You are both just gonna jump on me, and everybody's gonna be like, "Ah, oh, you're. What are you talking about?" You know. All right, let's hear how ridiculous no. is this is. I'm no. dying to know what it is. I can't. Just, I'm just. It's frustrating. So, I'm what out. is it? What is what? what oh, do if you everybody would have gotten vaccinated, we wouldn't have been in this problem. I don't know if that's the case though, because but I am yeah. vaccinated. Yeah, but. If everybody has it, we would we would be treating this thing like it's nothing, and we'd be like, "All right, well, I got the flu. I, I'm just not going to see people." It's like you treat it like you would the flu. But were that's you this what, worried that's about what killing we're doing. anybody? Were you this worried about killing anybody if you get the flu? No, you just say, get the flu. You feel sick. You stay home. You go. Your family's around. Doesn't matter. You go. You get over it and you go back to work. This would be that if we were all vaccinated my, problem the thing. biggest problem out of everything is that when people feel sick part of what anthony said is true too people are sick they have to work they don't get sick days they're going into work i agree but and if that's the biggest was problem if everyone mm -hmm. is vaccinated you you could probably and you get let's say let's call this let's say we got the, let's say there is no covid and it's just the flu but for a hypothetical and you get the flu I half the audience fuck, would agree with you on that. And you say, and you say, fuck it. And you say, fuck it. I'm going to go to work anyway. Right. And you end up getting someone sick with the flu. Right. Chances are they'll they'll get sick and the, and then they'll be okay. They'll be fine. Right. Right. That's the same, uh, thing, I, with, I same thing, thing with same thing with COVID though. No, you're not, not making it. With COVID. You're not yes. making a crazy point. But can I say this? No. Can I say this too? Yes. It, this also brings out, this also points out how. This is what's so frustrating. Sorry, Anthony, but I'm sorry. that's what's so frustrating. Go I ahead. didn't even hear what she said, so I, I was too busy trying to make I said, I said same, <laughs> She said same thing with COVID that you shouldn't have to worry about. It's like, no, because people are dying in record numbers from this stuff. People and die in record numbers of, of the flu too, but the problem is with the flu. It's more with COVID though. It's more deadly than okay. the flu. Well, come on, G. If you had COVID, you weren't you weren't going to be worried that you would give it to somebody who could give it to somebody who is somebody's aunt who could fucking die or something like that. You're not more worried about COVID than the flu. I know you're not worried about yourself, but if you infected somebody else, okay. See, that's can I? All right, let me make my point here. It's so ludicrous. Like the the pro. Like again, my my wife wasn't around anybody on Friday. 
anybody on Saturday. We were home. You know it what I'm saying? A couple, it takes a few days to it show It takes symptoms. a few days. But, like, even before she, so, you know, right around, like, if we had seen people on Sunday, I would, I would feel awful about that. I would literally feel awful. And the same way I was about to make my other point, transversely, if this turns out to be just the flu, I will feel like a schmuck for, for like making this whole stink about canceling with people and holding the kids back yeah, from that's school. If, it's the flu. if it, it was just it the fucking relief, flu. Though. It would be a relief, wouldn't it? It would be a relief, but I would feel like an asshole because there's no way of knowing. There's no way of telling. Right. The problem is with the flu, I feel... Okay, for, for me, like, personally, I hate when people either, either when they came to work sick, when they were sick and just didn't, you know, because they didn't feel like using a sick day or they didn't have any left. That was just annoying. Or if you go to, like, a friend's gathering and you're sick or your kids are sick, that's annoying. Yeah. Tim, it's not because I think that you're going to, like – kill me or my family it's just no i don't want to i don't want to get sick in general yeah but the, nobody wants to get the sick. problem is with this especially now obviously we don't really know too much about this strain there's a re i i think that's it's it's very strange that everybody's getting it um i mean even i know you said like uh the vaccinating doesn't people stop runs. you from getting it, it helps. right no i know that but the problem is it was stressed so much that you should get the vaccine so you don't die. But never stress that um, you should get the vaccine and you're still going to get it. And I think a lot of people let their guard down. They couldn't say that because then nobody would go get it. Right. And that's, well, that's the that's, whole thing. So people were like, I'm not going to get it. I'm vaccinated. Not you, Frank. No. It's, it's just in general. That's what, P yes, people thought that. People thought that. People well, it, just it does had help you. tunnel vision saying, I'm not going to die, so I have to get the shot. You're, you're less likely to get infected with it, but when you if you do, it helps you fight it. It's, they can't say that it does nothing to stop it. So if I'm, in a room with some, if I'm in a room with someone with COVID and an unvaccinated person is in the room with uh, someone with COVID, they're more likely to get it. They're more COVID. likely to get it than Correct. I am. Not but this strain, there, but there's a good chance, right? It's a little more. It's a little more likely that we'll both get it with this new strain. But the two, the two shot vaccine gives you a thirty percent more chance. You're thirty percent more likely to fight it off with no problems. But then the booster makes it seventy percent more that that you're able to fight it off. So, but now there's this Omicron, and seventy percent isn't good enough. They're coming out with this. Uh, this vaccine specifically designed for Omicron. Okay, let me ask you this. You you got vaccinated, got the booster, I got vaccinated. How, at what point, because when when people in the comments would shout at you and me to a degree about, like, oh, what are you going to do, get five or six? We're kind yeah. of at four already. <laughs> Like we're at <laughs> whatever it is, and I would whatever be like, "You're," is. I'll be like, "You're being a dick." Like, don't be such a dick. And now we're like almost there, and I'm like, "Oh, whatever it is, it keeps changing." So it keeps for you, keeps okay? But my becoming, my my keeps question becoming something new. So right, we have to I agree. Keep fighting but, this thing. But my question to you is: At what point do the pro vaccine people start to get vaccine burnout? Is my question. Like, what is it's, it's an opinion burnout? question. I'm sick of fighting a deadly disease. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess I could have thrown a towel because I don't want to get six instead of five. What the fuck is that? You you don't think anybody's gonna you don't think anybody's gonna tap out at they, four or they five? They probably or six. will, but I don't. I understand. think people already tapped out at two. I don't. Uh, I think so. Thing keeps mutating, so they keep coming up with another way to fight it. But after a while, it's gonna it's gonna mutate again. And people are going to go, what, another vaccine? I don't understand why. Frank is right. This vaccine. is basically a miracle of science. And we're like, oh, we're going to do this again. <laughs> it's like, it's just, it's like, I want to get to New Jersey from here in, in an hour and a half. Here's a car. Nah, I don't know about that. You came out with that too quick, too fast. I don't trust that. It's like, well, no, the car will get you there. All right. You don't want the car. How about a private plane? That'll get you there. Nah, you came out. It's like, you, at a certain point, you got to trust the people that know better than you. Uh, like I don't, I haven't done, I don't have a lab. I don't know what I'm doing with boosters and vaccines and shit. 
the people who studied it know way better than I do what it, what, what it's about. And they're the people saying, this will help you fight it. Here you go. So we take it and now we can fight it. I'm not saying it's you're now bulletproof. No, of course not. But of course, it's going to help you. Why but here's the, here's the thing. And I think this is like the biggest question. How can they actually prove that? How can they actually prove that if you got COVID and you didn't have the vaccine, that you would die? They, prove, they go by the numbers of people who come into the hospital. They say, all right, I have COVID. I went to the mm-hmm. hospital with my symptoms because whatever reason, maybe they're too bad. Maybe I just need to go to the hospital. And they go, all right, were you vaccinated? And they go, yes. Or they go, no. More people are going, no, I wasn't vaccinated. Those people are ending up in the hospital more than right. the vaccine. The problem is the answer, Gene, is there's no way of telling on an individual basis. It's just the overall they more have to play the numbers. People are dying. The problem is to uh, more unvaccinated people. This Did whole I say this whole time actually is that they're not counting, as we could see from today's news. Was it today or last last night um, with that judge and her complete. Uh, misuse of the numbers with the children in the hospital. She had no clue what she was talking about. People are going into the hospital with COVID, not because of COVID, or they're they're there for a car accident or something else, and they are testing them, and they're saying, oh, they have COVID. And that's what they're counting as a hospitalization. And that is a big problem because – that's not really like that's like fudging the numbers because what does that have to do with the vaccine? Hold on. Okay. Holding. So if they're if you say that they're cut if you go into the hospital and you have COVID mm-hmm. and they're saying are you vaccinated? First of all, how can they actually prove that? Because I'm sure there's people who have lied and said that they are or that they aren't. Sure. Just, just to be jerks and just lie or whatever but how can they actually that's think, like how can they actually get like a real true number of that that's my that's my whole thing like how can they really see i think if you go into the hospital i don't know i'm guessing here if you if they have to take your blood for some reason to test whatever i don't know if they can do you think they could see that you were vaccinated from a blood sample no i don't know that because you have antibodies if you had it before too. They can tell they yeah, can it's tell not just if, the antibodies in a vaccine. They can tell if you're vaccinated. They have to have a Microsoft computer and they go into the Bill Gates right. app and okay, that, that'll right. tell you. <laughs> well, you're in a re- you're also on record if you have been vaccinated. They have your information in uh on file that you've the been The thing vaccinated. is, do the people in the hospital have that um, Yes. have that con- I don't know if they do because yeah, then it's universal, easy for them to don't we have universal uh, uh, charts? Yeah, if for that I don't know. It's yeah, no, it's I think there. All your vaccines are on there. Yeah, you're you're. If you've because been who's to say people have. who work there don't just add their friends, family, coworkers to that list too? All right, how, all right. How we how ridiculous are we getting here? That's not ridiculous. <laughs> who's to um, say I didn't go in there yesterday? And I do know what like someone did. Them. <laughs> all right, can I tell you a big <laughs> problem with with? Right, can I tell you a big problem that nobody's talking about? So we go first thing in the morning. Oh yeah, I want to know what happened. And uh, by the way, wait, did you have an appointment? No. Okay. And we had to wait quite a bit. What time did you get there? But uh, before nine, we went early because they open early. Is can I just say this too? Like, I mean, all bullshit aside, kudos to these poor bastards. These people were standing outside. It was freezing. Two hours probably. And they're all out there like helping. But they were so friendly like you know okay this is going to be hard for people but i'll 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 convey it the best i know how frank and jenny we all grew up in new york do you remember the first time you went somewhere else like south carolina or virginia no my parents weren't rich so we didn't go all over well whatever but you went somewhere else and you were like why is everybody being so nice nice this guy hiding what is (laughs) what does he want with this bad, someone picking my pocket as we speak because yeah. in new york you were an inconvenience to everybody it didn't matter what was happening it's like come on let's like whatever like you know it's like i just want to buy this sandwich it's the like, people that want to come on 
<laughs> so when I went there this morning, like it, everybody was being so friggin' nice. It was great, and it's freezing. They had every reason to be angry, yeah. and they were so polite. So we finally get up to the guy who's gonna give us the test, and it's the still the it's the little tiny thing where you you open it up, and I don't know if people have seen it, but you open it up. It's it's already in the tube, and you crack it open, and it's yep. just a little tiny thing. Whereas the last time I did it, it was a full on, they give you like a whole, it's like a big long. You're talking about like a Q-tip? Q-tip, right. Ooh, now the I'm Q-tip in. is tiny. Yeah, they don't go as far. Uh, no thanks. Up. They right. don't. It's still far enough to go up. But like I said, like even when I went a couple of months ago, it was a long one that they, yeah. you know. So That's anyway, what she said. so the guy, and we had to scan the thing with our phone to get the barcode. So everybody was together because I say my kids and keeping track of it all. So the guy gives me a tissue and he goes, blow your nose. So it's early in the morning. So I blow my nose as hard as I can. There's nothing, Ugh. nothing there. I, even though I feel kind of like, you know, you know, when you first wake up, you're all little mm -hmm. like, you know, mm -hmm. so I blow and I blow and I, nothing, literally ha nothing. The tissue is as clean as when he handed it to me. Then I get the Q-tip thing, and I'm uh, like I'm up there digging. And you, got, the, you did it to yourself. Yeah, you have to do it to yourself. Like I had to give it to my kid. I gave it to my daughter and the kids. I did it for them. Put it back in the thing, and then hand it to them. That's weird. And, and then you do. Wait, it you did the drive-by one? The drive. It's a drive-through. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's why they were smaller. It, it wasn't inside. It was outside. Right. Yeah. But I stick this thing up my nut, and he goes all the way up there. I stick it all the way up there, and I pull out. The biggest goo. Uh, how'd you feel after that? <laughs> so That's disgusting. No, but so like, did your head feel lighter? <laughs> I felt like what? What was that movie where where they literally pulled the thing? Uh, Total like, Recall. Total Recall. <laughs> Get your ass to Mars. <laughs> this fucking thing. Oh god. Like you know the little models of the Empire, of the Statue of Liberty, that big. That's what it looked like. A big fucking glowing glob at the end of this little tiny thing and i i don't know what to do i don't i got i was right. like clip here you go i had a panic where i was like do i fling this off before i put it back? what'd you do i'm gonna throw up I'm i just put it right in the right thing now. the guy's just standing there looking at me i just put it right back in the thing oh i'm getting a little move on and move i told on. so i said <laughs> Yeah. So my my yeah. wife did my son's because she was on that side i was gonna do both of them, but she was like let's just get the fuck out of here and because, you, you know, they give you the thing and everything beforehand. So everybody was like sanitized. So she felt OK with doing it. And she was wearing two masks at the time. Um, so she, when I told my wife the story, because I did it outside of the car, because I was already outside of the car to do my daughter. When I told my wife the story, she said, oh, the same thing happened to Michael, my son. The same exact oh. thing happened. He blew his nose. And then he had a big goober kind of like lodged all over. Oh, it's there. like God. I hate that word for a gag. Not a gag. Sorry. A little levity to the whole situation. Yeah, yeah. Whole, whole levity. So anyway, so now here the fuck I and now it's like, oh, with, they'll tell you within 72 hours. I, You're like, in the middle of the 72 hours right now. Huh? I'm in the middle of 72 hours right now. So I have no idea. I don't know. Did the kids go to school or no? Uh, we kept the kids home. That was because that's the thing. Like, how do you send those kids into school? Are they sick or no? They might have it. No. No, they're not. But this I, is it. This is what we got to do. And I, because I don't even know. Because I said, you know, I'm like, how are you feeling? Is your head, they're like running around, they're eating. You know, they're fine. Like, it's, it's hard this to all tell. Could be, you don't know. It could all be just a, a cold. Could be, you know, Symptoms are very similar, but Janine's gonna hate this thing. But I wore a mask the whole day and like in the house, like around them. Oh, the God. most irritating day of my life today. Because my wife, I, I put my wife in the spare bedroom. I'm like, you just stay up here because you. The thing is, you've already been exposed, all of you. So well, okay, so, all right. So here's the other part of it. The uh, the fact that I like, I'm pretty sure if she's got it, I have it, but I can't consciously. I know you're shaking your head. I can't consciously be around my children. Even giving you all the information where they, they probably have it too. You know, if we have it, I can't consciously be around them without, I, I feel, cause I feel like even if there's this much of a chance that I got it and they don't, and I could keep them from getting it, I'll wear the stupid yeah. fucking thing in the house. Yeah. No, um, 
Someone I know got it, uh, and they had they. Someone I know got it, and their kids got it, but the husband didn't get it. Somehow, yeah. and then, so the husband stayed by his parents. Yeah, that's what I've heard too. That there's been households of three. Oh, sounds uh, like your friend did that on purpose, but I get it. I don't have to tell you. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, I, I don't really blame him. So I know who you're talking about now. Yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah, I think that friend. Uh, I think that friend gave it to his wife and his daughter to try and get out of that hellhole situation. But that's just possibility. That's possibility. Just... Now, did they give you the rapid test too, or no? No. I thought there would be. The last time I went, they gave me both. Like, you got to ask for both. She stuck two things in there. Yeah. And this That's time around, said. this time around, because the thing, okay, <clears throat> I, maybe I could have asked for the rapid, but I, I, we already had one at home that came back negative. And and the thing is, is too, is my wife was like, I've had the flu before. I've been sick before. This is, She's like, this isn't like anything I've ever felt before. And I've been fine the entire way through until today where I felt I had the headache and I had the little, I got the little throat thing right now that I'm feeling for the first time. Plus another yeah, thing. Be... Go ahead. Go ahead. Nope. Go ahead. I was gonna say the other thing is that we've been quarantined for like two years now, so when you get something like the flu, it hits you a little differently because you're you're not as well. Not cool. the rest of society, Frank. You've been quarantined. Everybody else has not gone out 100%, into the world. You know what I mean? I, uh, for the past year and before when we were yeah. quarantined, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it hits you a little differently. I think. The, the first time I got sick, like sick, sick, I was like, fuck. And I went for the test and I didn't have it. And I was like, oh, so this is just a, yes. this is what colds feel like again. Right. Could be that. But we have to do, what were you going to say? Janine? But going back to what Janine said before, before I, you. like, I agree. Like when somebody was like, oh, I got the flu. They used to just go into work. Yeah. And that was like a radio thing too, which I, hated because everybody just spit into the same thing all day long and you'd see one person come in sick and you're like you know this is going to take out the entire staff but there's this like macho bravado fucking thing in radio where like even if you're dying you have to go in and it will wipe something? out the whole staff you want to hear something that might make you gag a couple of weeks ago i went into the radio station I look at the microphone. It's got one of those wind, uh, what are they called? Windscreen. Uh, windscreens on. And there's like a really long nose hair sticking out of it. Uh, and you could see like the little white end of it. Like it came was out. Was it curly? Because then it's it was not, not a nose curly. Hair. No, it was not curly. It was a th one of those thick, like Jeff Goldblum from the fly looking bastards oh, sticking either. right out of it. I was like, okay, what do I do here? Eve. If like I took a piece of paper from like the printer and I just grabbed it, the whole fucking thing. I was like, nope, <laughs> just fucking launched it away. Oof. I would have just burned down the uh, station. Yeah, we'll figure it out later. That's what I would have done. Uh, J Sabs, you, we we gave a brief update on your job uh, status there. That the guy dicked you over. Has there I been mean, any further update? Literally dicked me over. Yeah. So we set up this appointment. Figuratively, hopefully not literally. I wish literally. No. Oh. Set up this appointment to speak on the phone or have a Zoom. Gave him my number. Uh, it's 2.30. Okay, it's 2.35. It's 2.40. It's 2.45. It's 2.50. I'm like, so email him. I'm like, hey, I'm still I'm um, here. I'm waiting for your call. No reply. I'm like, okay, maybe got stuck in something. It happens. Uh, the next morning, I email him. No reply back. And it's like, I just don't get these people. Like, Did you call the place? I didn't. Cause there is no, he didn't even, no number for the office? I don't, I don't think he even had his number in his signature. Hey, Google it. I'm sure but, I could find his number. Come on, dude. It's... It's just like, don't you, you would have had a blast speaking with me, okay? There would have been so many puns <laughs> over your head, in your face. <laughs> you missed out on a good conversation. And you know what? I kind of want to write, I kind of want to write this to this person. You could just, if you got I want to be like, hey, listen, like, I don't know what happened last week, but I'm really disappointed because I really feel, feel like I would have been a 
perfect fit for your company. Um, perfect. And what fit. you guys you, and what you guys do. Like how the boner four thousand fits into a three inch penis. Right. Yeah. So hello. Oh, so rude. It was a penile implant company, by the way, for those who missed any of the first yeah. part of the and, I mentioned that. And ball sack. And testicles. And ball sack. Yeah. So it's just so weird to me. Come it on. Weird. So well, we'll see. I mean, you could I what I would do is I would I'd find his number and call him, catch him off guard. Like, hey, we had an appointment the other day, and you were supposed to talk to me, and and you you, you stood me up. What's going on? I don't know. That's like psychopathic behavior. Yeah, so you just let it go. <laughs> no, I wouldn't yeah. say it like that. But like, oh, just checking in. Didn't know what happened. Hope everything's okay. If you want to go the nice route, I'd say, would you like to maybe talk now? Do you have some time? Or you can go the crazy route and be like, hey, why'd you ghost me, you bastard? How come you didn't call me? You should be like, what's your fucking problem, fuckhead? Right, yeah, right. You're right. You think you're too good? You think because you sell um, cock and ball implants, you're too good for me? It's Honey, what looking for, I, think. I could run around, run around circles in your company. You should say I'm going to start a vagina implant company now. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Guess right. what I'm doing? I'm starting another penile and <laughs> <laughs> scrotum implant company right yeah. here on Long Island. Okay. Made right here on the island. Um, the Golden Globes. All right, so you're going to keep us posted, oh, Jenny? Yeah, what time is it? It's almost time to go. This is a yeah. two-second story. The Golden Globes didn't... The Golden Globes happened. They didn't put it on TV on Sunday. I am baffled by this. I, I, why not? They said it was because... So NBC supposedly canceled the broadcast because of the lack of diversity on in the organization that does the Golden Globes, which is like the Hollywood Foreign Press. Okay. After the Hollywood Foreign Press and everybody, like Golden Globes, Grammys, this is the trend now. Everybody is going towards a diversity thing, right? In these award shows, they're promising diversity. And um, which I think it was the Grammys that are like, oh, we're going to be as diverse as ever. And then next year they came back and they're like, all right, well, we haven't hit our goals yet, but we hope next year will be in. It's like, how hard is this to really do if you really want to do it? You know what I mean? Like, if you want to be diverse, be diverse. Then just um, do it. Just do it. Just start on, you know. Don't say you're going to do it. Yeah, we yeah. tried, but we couldn't. It's I, like, I, no, no. I mean, even the NFL, which had a horrific way of doing it, they're like, I don't know, we hired Jay-Z. Is that good for everybody? And everybody was like, not really, but we do trust Jay-Z, so okay. You know, like, that's basically how they went to diversify. They just hired Jay-Z, and that was it um God. nbc and supposedly like close to last minute i mean or maybe i just heard about it last minute they were just like yeah we're just going to cancel the broadcast and not do it so they still at, you know named winners there was nominees and winners it's just nobody fucking knows i wonder if it. they i wonder if they went through the whole thing as if the cameras were rolling well they just well, like were people showing up with Sitting, you know, was there someone on stage telling jokes and stuff? No, I don't think. Well, here's what's weird. So it used to be that they had like they would announce the nominees and nobody knew. And then somebody thought, oh, I know. Let's put the nominees on TV. And so they started oh. doing that. So the nomination announcements, because I think they're on Good Morning America or something. And then or like at least like the big ones are on Good Morning America. And then they just do the rest of them. They just stream them online for people who want to watch them. Right. So that was like a thing where it was like, oh, nobody really. Even the rock, like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, was the same thing. It was never on TV. They just did it in a ballroom at a hotel somewhere, and then right. somebody thought, let's fucking put a camera in here and you know capture some of these performances that are happening. But now, yeah. but I don't think story. that's what happened for this. No, a lot of good stuff. One, two, from what I understand, it was just a bizarre. I, the whole thing, I just can't wrap my head around. It's like we still have the awards, but we're canceling the broadcast. But it's not I, I don't, you know, like and NBC is paying for the broadcast. Yeah, and I'm sure there are sponsors and stuff that they had. And... This doesn't make sense to me. Hey. It's very odd. I do have a, um, a bone to pick with you guys, too. I watched the broadcast last week about Chris Noth. No, he says not. No, whatever. Okay. And you said something wrong about sex in the city, and now I can't remember it. Fuck. 
Oh, you can't remember what it was? No, and I was like, guys, no, this is why you need to be here. Come on. Like about the what show? happened on the show at, at some point? Yeah. Yeah, well, and it was completely wrong. I mean, we were, I get it. We were floundering in our Sex in the City coverage without you. That's yeah, what you're to be fair, I, mean, yeah. I didn't watch the show. Gasping and Anthony, I don't know if you did. I'm uh, I'm watching it now and I'm 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 in I'm hooked I'm on yeah but it. you not the not the old one the new one my wife's did got you, me did on you it. ever watch the other the original no but I know my wife is going through it because I hear it as I pass that bedroom and also when I go to watch my HBO Max I see that ah. that past episodes <laughs> keep switching so she's I like on a, it a marathon of the olden days I will say oh my god this is awful <laughs> somebody's gonna clip this did you watch this week's episode. Yes. Boy. It was very funny. <laughs> <laughs> when she was in her apartment, in her new apartment, with the sound, I don't want to say too much. I was fucking cackling. I really was cackling. Oh. Yes. The way they did that, we, Frank, we were talking about this. You were saying how you don't really find it all that funny. This was Seinfeldian in the timing of this one bit that is carried through this particular episode cool like and she knows seinfeld so i i wouldn't be surprised if somebody in that universe was like you know it would be funny i hope so if you did this i certainly yeah. hope so because my opinion it's just my opinion i'm sure everybody loves it and for good reason but my own opinion is i just always found it cliche and just everything every joke was obvious it was see i didn't i didn't never got that yeah, I, I just, never, it, I never got that. From, the best but, example is, and I didn't see the movie, but I saw it. It, it, it was in the coming attraction. Uh, the for Sex and the City two, they walk into whatever hotel, uh, and she goes, "I don't think we're in Kansas anymore." It's like, oh god, <laughs> that is come corny. on, right? So, and I, that's that was the best example of this type of jokes that I always ran into whenever I watched it. I was like, geez, they were always eye rolling and like, uh, uh. I, I know who that was. That was the brunette, right? I don't even know who said it. I think so. She's, she plays it up very cheesy on that show for some reason. Yeah. Uh, Kristen yeah. Davis. Kristen Davis. Cause I've yeah, seen kind of old I've fashioned seen... and, and reserved. No, but I've seen her in other shit. Like in couples retreat, she was, like a normal actress in that she was good in this show i think i don't know why she plays up that character to be like way over the top and her eyes are always bulging when she delivers like a cheesy line or something and i thought i just thought wall-to-wall -wall cheesiness is what is my opinion anyway listen Frank, but that's only me it's me. i'm a sex I, in the city fan now i know i'm okay. in the minority i'm very big into it <laughs> i i understand it's a, it's darn a it hit. i can't remember what it was but i was like come on guys what did we say well, you were talking about the show more than I was because you you watched it. Uh, the fact probably... that she, she falls in love with the new boss, no, or the trans kid, no, non-binary kid. I don't know what it was. Well, <laughs> she was in the bedroom with a hip replacement or something. Oh, she peed herself. No. Uh, yeah. Well, I forgot what. It... I'm gonna have to go back. Great, I have to go back and listen to you fucking guys again. While well, I'm washing my dishes. <laughs> Sucks to be you. That's what I'll know, but I'll be doing tomorrow morning. Go ahead. You guys got anything else? I'm good. Um, no. All right. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's it for us. Don't forget to uh, go over to the uh, shop, com. Grab some swag for yourself. Frank and Janine were both showing off the look at that. Ah, oh. uh, you see? Come on. See if we could clink. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that was terrible. Uh, you can support the podcast by grabbing some merch or grab Jumpstart Coffee Company. Save yourself 15% uh, with the promo code AOA15. Order with the link in the description below. Until we see you guys on the next episode, thank you so much for watching and or Show listening. Show me potato salad. Show me your tits. Maybe we should go now.